Senator Hickelhofer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Ranking Member. I appreciate the, the hearing, the opportunity to hear both sides of the argument. Um, uh, and I want to say, um, Ms. Nelson, in case I don't get back to you, uh, when I was governor, I think one of the reasons we were successful, I hired a woman named Ellen Gollenbeck who came in as the, uh, my Secretary of Labor, <laughs> and she had been a flight attendant and organized uh, fl flight attendants. And her impact on the other leadership of our state was profound. In other words, she had a different way of resolving differences. And I have utmost respect for Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Fain, but I do think that sometimes having more women in organized labor is uh, beneficial. We de-escalate and we lead. We don't challenge the cage matches. That's exactly right. <laughs> now, 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 now. <laughs> um, uh, let me, Mr. Fain, let me talk, uh, start with you. Um, the Economic Policy Institute uh, found that as union membership has declined, there's been a corresponding rise in income inequality. Um, and since the announcement of UAW's tentative agreement uh, with the big three, Toyota, Hyundai, Toyota, Toyota have all, Toyota, uh, Hyundai, and others have subsequent, subsequently announced wage increases um, for their workers. Uh, union advocates have always, of course, um, uh, uh, advocate for their members, but that uh, has been made a couple times already today that uh, this is a benefit that non-unionized workforces receive as well. So in addition to the wage increases, what are some of the other benefits that you expect to see for non-unionized workers following the recent tentative agreement? Does it, did I make myself clear? Well, I mean, wage increases are one thing, but I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things we bargain for. I mean, health and safety standards. Uh, you look at with the EV uh, industry alone, there, there are chemicals that, you know, aren't regulated yet that we know we're still working on. And, you know, when you have a union uh, involved in that, there's, there's a means for, uh, you know, we have safety committees that actually work on those things. So safety is always a big issue. Um, you know, work-life balance issues, uh, just as we talked about uh, paid leave um, for employees, you know, with the birth or adoption of a child. I mean, um, you know, there's uh, several things you know, we could go on and on about. But, uh, you know, it, it really comes down to, I think, you know, when, when you look at the, the wage bump right away, what we call the UAW bump, I mean, I think that's just predominantly people go to work to try to sustain a living. And so... I think we focus a lot on the wages, and I think it gets a lot of focus. I think that's the immediate concern of the, these three companies, Toyota, Honda, and, and, and the Hyundai right away, was to raise wages because it's the quickest thing that is visible that will hopefully, in their opinion, discourage members from wanting to become part of a union. But Absolutely. Uh, but no, I, I couldn't agree more, and I think that's, that, that bump is, is profound for so many people's lives, and we've heard about that from a, different, a number of different speakers. Uh, the electrification and that transition to, uh, to a decarbonized transportation economy, um, this is a global trend. And we've had uh, witnesses speak on these hearings before that talk about once people drive an electric vehicle, they don't want to go back. And this is going to be driven by consumers. Now, issues around cost certainly are relevant. Um, the, uh, in any new uh, transition to a new economy, usually there are price differentials that we try to smooth over. Um, as we transition to uh, electric vehicles, unions are um, importantly negotiating deals that help balance the emerging technologies uh, with job retention. In other words, obviously there's mm -hmm. going to be some efficiencies here. Your tentative agreement uh, included new uh, commitments to ensure existing manufacturing plant workers can transition into the electric workforce. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, how you approach negotiating that tentative deal? Uh, balancing the EV goals. It, I mean, mm -hmm. the climate change is real. I'm not sure that we've had too many witnesses here that don't believe it's a real issue. So figuring out how to get to a decarbonized economy is going to be critical. How did you look at protecting the workers' rights as we make that, that transition? Yeah, I mean, our main concern going into this was the fact that we knew... I'll go with that big guy. Sorry. Yeah, our main concern going into this was that we knew that this was on the horizon and it was coming fast, so... Naturally, we, we talked about a lot of just transition. We, no matter how this goes, no matter what the timing is on it, we want to make sure uh, in, in, in uh, just in the UAW alone, in the big three, 20% of the workforce is in powertrain work, which is making engines, transmissions that drive the vehicles. If that work does, you know, uh, taper off, naturally, and, and batteries take that place and, the, and, and you know, uh, drive motors and things like that, 
we want to get a big piece of that so that there is a transition where workers aren't left behind. So we bargain for uh, language, you know, to give our members flow rights into those jobs in the event that that's happening. And, um, you know, and, and that's how it has to, you know, to me, that's what a just transition is. It, it's, it's not leaving people behind, but also new people that hire into those plants that they won't work for poverty wages, which was the case in all team in Lordstown, Ohio, when I was elected president. And we've changed that now. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more, and I think that's going to be a big challenge for everybody, for both sides of every issue, for Republicans and Democrats, to figure out as we do go through this great transition, which is real, and most of us think it has to happen, yeah. how do we do that in such a way that the, that the friction, the turbulence, the, the, the loss is minimized for, uh, for the people that do the work? Yeah. Anyway, thank you. I've got to go preside, so I yield back to the floor. Sorry to run off.